Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're going to learn a little bit about the time effector and how it can really increase your workflow inside of Cinema 4D. Let's learn how. Alright, so this is what we're going to be making today with the handy dandy time effector. You can see we have these little fractured pieces flying off into nothing and shrinking down slowly over time. And this is driven, this whole entire animation driven with just two keyframes. And uh, let's just go ahead and learn a little about our friend, the time effector. So if you're not familiar with the time effector, let me just go ahead, I'm just gonna grab a cube, just go ahead and clone it. I'm gonna grab my cloner object, throw the cube as a child of it. Cloner's gonna clone it three times, uh, and space it 50 centimeters in the Y. What I'm gonna do is just space this out in the X. So I'll increase this value here, zoom out, and then increase the count. And we got six clones now, six cubes. So the time effector, if you're used to After Effects, there is an expression called time. And basically what the time expression does is allows you to apply animation to any parameter and over time, it will actually uh, multiply, use uh, the frame rate or use the frame that you're on. So if I'm on frame two, the time expression represents two. So if I multiply that time value by say 10, that value will actually be 20 because it's the time, which is two frame two times 10 is 20 and then that, so if we have like a rotation value, that rotation value would be 20. Now if we go to three, frame three, that value is now 30. So in the course of a frame, we went from a rotation value of 20 to 30, and then over time, that value would then drive that whole entire animation. So it's the basic, same kind of basic concept. Let's just go ahead and grab our time effector in the effector menu. It's all the way at the bottom, sad and lonely at the bottom of the effector list with just the volume effector, the sad volume effector below it. But let's show the time effector some love today. Uh, since I had the cloner object selected, uh, the time effector is already applied. So you can already see that uh, we have something happening here. We have some cubes rotating. And you can see that by default, our time effector is set to 90 degrees in the heading. If I hit play, you can see that uh, hopefully my jibber jabbering about the time expression made some sense because basically what's happening with the time effector is that every 30 frames, this cube is going to travel 90 degrees. And then at 60 frames, it will travel 180. So you can see at frame 30, it actually looks the same. At frame 60, it looks the same. And at frame 90, it looks the same because it's all increments of 90 degrees. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how this works. So over time, this is just gonna keep going. And as I increase this value, we're increasing the speed of our rotating cubes. And I can go negative here, so it's rotating the different value, uh, different uh, direction and I can bring a very tiny, tiny value in here and have these slowly rotate. And again, no keyframes applied whatsoever. It's just being driven by the time effector. So one other cool thing with this is I can use you know, scale and position so I can have these guys slowly fade off into space and float away. Uh, but the really cool thing about the time effector is utilizing it with different effectors, one, being the random effector. Now if I go ahead, I got my cloner selected, I'm gonna to go to my MoGraph menu and grab random. So we're gonna go rando on this. Uh, right now it's just applying random uh, position values. Uh, I'm just gonna turn that off. And then what I'm gonna do is use the weight transform. What the weight transform does is apply different, is, is uses noise to drive and apply different strengths and apply different strengths to each of our clones. And so if I turn this up, you can see nothing's happening, and that's because in our effector stack, we actually need that randomness to be applied first. So the random values will be applied first, and then that time effector will be applied second. And already you can see 
that some of our cubes are going a little slower, especially this one. Now we can see this more pronounced if we say go to our effector menu here and adjust the seed of that noise that our random effector is using. And say if I just move it once, you can see that these two cubes are going way slower than the rest. This guy is just a speed demon. He's speeding Gonzalez going off the screen here. Uh, and that is all driven by the random effector here. So if I increase the value in Y, these are going to move faster in Y. You can see this uh, the difference in speeds more pronounced. So uh, that's really awesome. Yeah, right? Cool. Uh, we can actually go ahead and on the time effector use some fall off. Uh, so we don't have this just this trigger animation right off the bat. We can actually use a fall off to then drive and apply those time values to our objects. So let's go ahead and adjust or fall off to, let's do negative Z or negative X. And I'll just make this fall off a little wider and increase the fall off to 100%. And then what's gonna happen, and let's actually just increase my time length to 1000 so we can see what happens over a longer period of time. And as I'm moving this, you can see that as the fall off goes past that clone, it's actually applying that time effector to it. And it's just gonna slowly fade off into space and going to leave these other clones alone that haven't then been uh, affected by the fall off here. So as the fall off's going through, up oh, it now affected that clone. And again, that uh, because this value is so high in the Y, uh, it's actually creating a very uh, abrupt kind of move. You can see as that uh, the Y value is lower, as that fall off goes through, it's a little smooth because it's not jumping so fast. It's not jumping so high because that Y value is so high. So to get a nice smooth, like transitional move, you wanna keep that value fairly low in the Y or whatever direction you're rotating. So something like this, we can add more random rotation values, but you can see how that looks really crazy right there. So I wanna make these values fairly slow. So when this happens, it's just kinda of going like that. So this is uh, really nice. To then we can just animate this fall off and drive this animation. We can also go backwards and say, hey, actually don't affect that one cube, but still affect that cube. And that cube can still move up. We can use a spherical fall off like that and make this bigger. Scale this up. We can do something like this. E. And again, it's not just like a plane effector where it just moves things up. Uh, that time value, that time effector is going to still affect and move these objects over time depending on the values you apply in the uh, parameter here. So I can actually have these guys kind of go to the X as well and just kind of float away or f uh, float forward or in the, the negative Z. So a lot of fun stuff. Uh, so let's actually take this to uh, to be able to make our final fractured little marble thingamajig we got here. Thingamajig, that's what I'm calling it. So let's just get our torus and let's get our sphere. You can set, you can tell I really gave a lot of thought into this composition here. <laughs> sphere and a torus. So let's go ahead and adjust the ring segment so we can smooth out those edges. Same thing with the sphere, it's a little bit chunky right now. Just up the segments. And uh, the one thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna fracture this. Now, I have Cinema 4D R18 and that comes equipped, equipped with the brand new Vronoi Fracture. And this is kind of similar uh, to Thrausi. So if you have an older version of Cinema 4D, you can do the same kind of thing with Thrausi, but I'm gonna use the of Roronoi Fracture, because it's awesome, and it's procedural too. Procedural meaning that I can go into, uh, basically this is the point generator that's creating our fracturing. What I can do is click on that and adjust the point amount. So when I say it's non-destructive, I can actually move this and adjust this and not have to destroy or make anything editable. It's all live. Uh, so I have all these points. 
uh, what I can do is say create points per object. So right now we have 86 points. And since I have the sphere and the torus underneath it, it's actually uh, fracturing this whole entire object, the both the sphere and the torus combined 86 times. So there's 86 points between the two. If I turn on create points per object, there's actually 86 points for the sphere and 86 points for the torus. You can see a lot more density of these points in the smaller sphere. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and now we can actually adjust the distribution type. So right now it's uniformly uh, randomly uh, spaced across both these objects. We can change this to say exponential and we can use these uh, X, Y, and Z axis affections to control this. So you can see the X axis affection is turned to positive. So uh, and it's kind of backwards because all of our points are actually in negative Z. Uh, and I can pr make this to po uh, negative Z and everything's flipped to positive. So it's kind of repelling in different directions. So say I want all my fracturing, most of my fracturing density to be in the top right. Well, all I have to do is adjust the y-axis affection and you can see that now most of my points are all uh, clustered around this top right. So looking good. Another cool thing is we can actually use these x and y values to kind of adjust this whole entire thing. And we can also scale how these points are affected and rotate, which is really cool. So we can more fine tune all of our points here. And again, we can definitely adjust the point amount as well and adjust the seed, the random seed, so we can get just the kind of fracturing we like. And I'm liking that. And we can just click this eyeball, poke the eyeball, and that'll shut off all of our points. So this is looking good. Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring in our friend the time effector because this Voronoi fracture has an effector menu that we can now uh, apply effectors to. So I got my Voronoi fracture, fracture selected. Let's go to effector, go to time. And uh, again, we got the random value. So we just have all of our rotation values. Everything's spinning very uh, nicely and elegantly. And that just looks pretty ugly. So what I'm gonna do is let's just go ahead and grab our linear fall off and let's have this facing uh, the negative x so I can move this over and kind of rotate this and angle this so it's just affecting this top corner here and you can see that now we're just spinning all of these chunks up in the corner here let's get a little bit of our sphere in there something like that and I think what I want to do is make more of these chunks uh, down here so it's not a big chunk there. So let's increase. And again, this is the cool part about the Voronoi fracture is I can just live, this is all live, I can go in here, I can move all this stuff around, I can scale up stuff, uh, and this would make more sense if I had the points still. So again, I'm scaling up where those point clusters are and everything, looking good. And uh, I'm liking that a little bit better. So let's use our time effector to kind of drive these little fra uh, uh, segments or fractures uh, and have them fly off into the space into the top right of our composition. So I can do that. And I'm, what I want to do is just give a slight rotation value to all of this stuff. So they'll slowly rotate over time and kind of look like they're tumbling in space. Let's go ahead and activate position and have them move over and up. And that's a little too fast, so I'll just bring these values down fairly low. So this is a very subtle kind of move, very slow, subtle move. And I can actually have these move towards the camera as well by giving this a negative Z value and see what's going on there. So everything's kind of tumbling and moving forward into the top right here. Now the only thing we need to do is have these kind of scale down over time as well. And unfortunately, the way the scale works with the uh, time effector is that if I have this scaled down to negative one, you can see that it scales down, but then scales up again. So what we're gonna do to control the scale is actually just create a plane effector. And let's just create, uh, create our plane effector here. And let's make it a child of our time effector. And what we're gonna do is basically have uh, if I turn on the fall off 
for my plane effector linear in negative z. So it's the same uh, orientation as our time effector. And then what I'm going to do is just zero out the coordinates on my plane effector. So you can see that my plane effector is basically lined up and aligned to my time object. So when I move the time effector, because my plane effector is a child of it, the plane effector is going to go along with it. So now what I can do is go ahead and turn off position, turn on scale in uh, uniform scale, and just have everything scaled down to zero or minus one. And you can see uh, it's not doing anything because I haven't had it applied to our Voronoi fracture. So there we go. Now you can see our little fragments scaling down over time. I can adjust my fall off size here and maybe move it uh, out a little bit more. So these will slowly fade over time. Let's just uh, bring our time uh, timeline length to a little bit higher so we can see more of this animation kind of drive uh, play out. So you can see everything's floating off into space. And again, I can have just these fragments slowly move off into space. I can, uh, again, this is where the power of this is gonna come in handy is, is just animating this fall off. Uh, the one thing I want to kind of point out, if I turn off this plane effector, uh, there's this one useful uh, thing in the fall off called clamped. Uh, basically what clamp does is applies like a strength of 0 to 100% with the time effector. But the thing with the time effector is you can actually keep going beyond that top value. So 0 to 100% you can actually go faster than that. And that is, uh, you can enable that by actually uh, unabling this clamped value. You can see that once I did that, can see those little chunks kind of move a little bit faster. So basically what that means is that once it gets to 100% of that fall off strength, it'll actually continue to gain strength over that same kind of incremental period. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you can see it a lot more if I increase the values uh, and, and toggle this clamped on and off. So that's clamped on. That's clamped off. It's a very subtle thing, but you can see that there's less of like a uh, like a barrier or like this vertical or a uh, like a wall that it's hitting. We got some of these chunks kind of floating out and gaining speed faster than the rest. So keeping clamped off is pretty handy for that. Uh, one last thing, uh, at least effector wise, is going ahead and creating our little randomness. So let's get a random effector in here. And again, turning off the position, making sure it's applied to our Voronoi fracture. We're gonna go ahead and have our random effector applied first. Apply that weight transform, and you can already see how much that really adds some nice organic movement to this. So this is looking really good. Again, no keyframes whatsoever. This is just uh, our effector doing its thing, our time effector doing its thing with all these effector stuff stacked on top of it. Uh, so now what we can do is apply some materials to this stuff, right? Let's actually make our sphere a little bit bigger. So another th cool thing, again, non-destructive, I can go ahead and edit any of the objects in my fracture, uh, Voronoi fracture there. Uh, with the with the Throusy, you have to just make an object, fracture it up, and then you're just kind of stuck with the result. So Voronoi Fracture is really handy in that regard. So let's go ahead and let's have this play out. And then the cool thing about the Voronoi Fracture, and you can actually do this with the Throusy plugin as well, is you can mat uh, pl place materials on the inside faces and outside faces of your fractured object. So what that means is uh, I can turn on and check the inside and outside faces and what you'll see is we now have these uh, polygon selection tags that are created, one for the inside faces, one for the outside faces. Uh, and you know I love me some uh, 2D workflow uh, cool handy tips. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you how you can use this for a cool like 2D transition or 2D effect like a logo fracture or something like that. I'm just going to use uh, luminance here and apply this to the Voronoi fracture. And let's just have the white texture on the outside faces. So I'll just apply, uh, drag and drop that selection tag to the selection on my material. You can see that all the outside faces are white and our inside faces have that weird 
uh, random color stuff happening. And so what I can do is check on luminance here and maybe make this like a dark red. And I can apply this to the Voronoi Fracture and just have this affect the inside faces. So on my red material, I'm just going to drag and drop that inside faces selection uh, into the selection field. And now you can see we got this really cool uh, 2D fractured composition here. So again, like this could be really cool for some kind of uh, logo animation or something like that. I don't know. Get your uh, creative noggins going. Put your creative thinking hats on and do something fun with this. Uh, but just throwing that out there. But what I actually want to do is create like a marble texture. I'm just going to do that very quickly. So uh, let's just create new materials. This will be uh, just our outside faces uh, marble. And let's go into our color. And what I'm going to do is create a layer shader. And that allows me to kind of stack different shaders, or in this case, different noises, to try to create some nice procedural marble texture. So I'm going to go ahead and create some knocky noise. And I'm going to uh, change the color from black of one of the parts of the noise to like a uh, medium gray that has a little blue hue to it. Uh, let's just up the brightness a little bit. Let's crank up the size. Uh, and you can see in our preview window, this is kind of looking like marble a little bit. Let's uh, up the contrast here. Let's uh, cr and crank up the octaves. And that what that'll do is make the noise a little bit more complex. And we'll bring the brightness down a little bit. So you can kind of see what's going on here. Something like that. So let's look in kind of close to uh, some kind of marble. Uh, and again, the whole point of the uh, layer shader is so we can actually uh, duplicate this. And what I did was just click on this little square and move it up, and that duplicated it. I'm going to go into this noise, the new noise I just made. And what I'll do is change this to a different type of noise, and I'll choose Nutchious. I think that's how you say it. it. Sounds a little dirty when I say it like that, but whatever. Uh, and then I'm just going to adjust some of these values a little bit, get more of this white in here, uh, up the brightness. And you can see that, hey, this is looking kind of like uh, some, some cool marble stuff happening. I'm going to make this global scale up to 2,000 so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just kind of shrink this down a little bit, something like that. So shrink it down the Y, and then what I can do is combine these two noises together. So just like layers in Photoshop, I can use these blending modes to apply one uh, shader on top of the other. I can bring this strength or the opacity down on this top layer, and uh, maybe increase the, uh, some of the stuff here as well. And what I can do is also adjust the seed so we get a different type of noise something like that let's actually see what this looks like by applying it to our material that would make sense right or to our object let's go ahead and uh, let's see we want to have this as the outside face so we're just going to replace that white material and let's just hit render and that looks pretty good actually cool close enough <laughs> and so what we're gonna do is just grab this uh, layer shader copy it and place it into our luminance and just multiply this on top of the whatever color we choose here and I'm just gonna bring down the strength a little bit more so you can see this is just kinda introducing some brightness uh, so our shadows aren't too dark on this and uh, let's go ahead and copy this to the bump as well. So we just have a tiny, tiny bit of bump. And let's go to our reflectance and adds uh, just a little bit of reflection. I'm going to add this on top of our specular and we're just going to add, uh, change this to additive so it adds on top of our color channel. Bring the reflection strength to say uh, seven, six, that works and maybe a little bit of roughness, just a little bit. Uh, and I think we're done there. Just bring the strength down just a little bit, see what that looks like. 
looking pretty good. Let's add a, let's add a light so we can see how this looks with shadows. So I got my area light here. Let's go uh, turn on area shadow. Just bring the accuracy down just so it renders faster for this tutorial and change the fall, fall off to inverse square. See what that looks like. Looking good. And this actually looks pretty cool with like just the inside with that flat 2D texture. So again, get your, uh, do some cool stuff with this. Do mix, mix and max some uh, texture stuff. Let's uh, bring down the strength of this, maybe give it a yellowish hue. So it acts like a real light because real lights aren't just pure white. And let's bring this down. Uh, let's create a new light. And this will be like a rim light, so we get some nice backlighting on this. Let's crank up the uh, fall off. We'll turn off shadows for this. Maybe bring this down. Maybe make it blue. See what that looks like. And that's looking good. We got this nice backlight hitting uh, the edges of our torus here, looking really nice. I'm digging it. So now, I think what I want to do is just bring in, let's just bring in uh, our. HDRI Studio just to get some uh, an HDRI image to reflect some stuff and you can see we got some nice reflections happening just very subtle nothing too too shiny here I'm digging that so now we can actually go <coughs> excuse me and make our inside marble texture so I'm just gonna duplicate the marble texture we had and this is be mar marble dark and what this is going to be is applied to the little fractured pieces so those fractured bits of marble are going to be super rough so I want to make the noise uh, a little bit smaller and more rough so let's uh, decrease the contrast let's bring down the scale to say 500 and let's adjust the other noise under here bring this down to 500 and Maybe something like that. Let's make this even smaller, so 250 maybe. And we can change, you just make this, uh, change the Luca maybe, sure. And uh, I think that's looking pretty good. I want to scale this down even more. So we just want really fine, gritty noise. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it into our texture here. And I'm gonna make this darker. I'll actually make this blending mode multiply as well so we can make this a little darker here in our color channel. Uh, reflectance, I'm just going to, no reflection for the inside because the inside is going to be so rough. Um, and then the, we'll just paste this into the bump and what we're going to do is really crank up this bump channel here, the bump strength. And uh, so we'll just replace that inside face's uh, pink magenta texture with this rough bit. And we'll see what that looks like. And that's looking pretty good. We just want a little bit of contrast between the outside and the inside. So you can tell that those are different uh, kind of uh, materials as they're really roughed up on the inside there. Cool. And uh, now I think this is looking pretty good. Maybe turn on some ambient occlusion just so we have some nice shading in between those cracks. So let's get that. Uh, there it is. And we'll just bring down the minimum, uh, maximum ray length. Whoa, it's a little high. So 30, just because there's not a lot of space between these little pieces anyway, so we don't want to do overkill there. I think that's looking good. We got some nice shading in between all of our little uh, fragments. Now, the only thing we have left to do is just animate the, uh, our effector here. So our effector stack. So what I'll do is I'll just set a keyframe. Let's just see where this actually starts affecting it, our torus. So right about there. So that's where I'll set some keyframes at the very start. And just in the X and Y because I'm not moving this in the Z forward or backwards. And I'll just have this slowly move into our torus and sphere over 120 frames, set some keyframes there. And if we did this nicely, we should see some nice fracturing happening. And I think this is actually uh, moving too fast. So I'm just gonna move these keyframes down a little bit. 
and now you can see it's a little bit more gradual and because default uh, by default we have ease in and ease out frames applied what I'm going to do is go to my timeline twirl down our time effector position and uh, just kind of just drag these open a little bit just kind of smooth that out and have more of a, a gradual curve here Something like this. Let's see what this looks like. Hit play. So you can see this is gradually happening. And that looks good. We don't see any like uh, adjustment in strength or uh, adjustment in speed. If we have this go really fast, you'll see this will look really odd. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. So you can see that just flies in. And again, uh, this would look really bad if we had higher values because that value is being applied over the length of our effector. So if this is really high, you can see whoo, we got that really high speed there happening pretty quickly, just like that. So we want to try to avoid that. So this is looking pretty good. We just have this whoo, coming in, something like that. And uh, we have this really nice animation still applying, even though our effectors stop, that time effector is still pushing those values, those rotation values uh, in here. And then we also have our plane effector out here, uh, just kind of shrinking everything down as well. So looking really nice. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could animate this effector to go all the way through our object here like that. Uh, but that's really not how I built this, because you see I've got these big, big fragments over here. So I only really wanted to get to right about there and then just have this animation take place where uh, you know these fragments kind of go like that. Um, one thing you could do, little extra stuff, is you know these are very linear. We can actually add some like turbulence uh, in the form of another random effector. So this is just like bonus points here. Let's go ahead and have our Voronoi fracture. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Make sure that's applied. Yep. And then again, we'll have to have our fall off here set to linear, uh, negative, uh, negative x. And then again, just have this right underneath uh, the time effector, zero this stuff out. And by default, we don't have an animated noise. We just have a noise happening here. Let me rotate this. There we go. And uh, basically, to animate the noise, we just cha uh, have to change the random mode to uh, turbulence. And you can see we have some animated noise happening now. Uh, and again, we can adjust the clamped here. And these will just kind of go kind of crazy. You can see how much of a difference that is. It just kind of, it's more organic. So I might just keep the clamped off. Uh, and then I can adjust the animation speed here to something very low, just something slow, undulating. And actually, I think maybe I'll just keep that clamped on. I don't know. I think I like it off. And maybe bring these values down. So we got this nice undulation happening. Let's crank up the scale of our noise. So you can see that as the noise is bigger, uh, the undulation is a little bit softer. You can really tell the size of the noise when I crank these values up. You see if it's small noise, things are just dancing all over the place. We've got big noise. we got some cool stuff happening. So those are some big values. So I'll just shrink them down a little bit. But you can see that that adds some nice little undulation happening there. Uh, and adds a little bit more organic movement to our little objects here. So this is what it looks like all rendered out. Got our marble material. We have everything driven by just two keyframes uh, in the position on, of our, uh, just our time effector fall off. So really cool. Uh, one last thing is uh, you can actually animate this to come in. Let me actually just delete the keyframes on this guy here. So we'll just delete and uh, We'll have this animated in. We can actually animate this coming out too. So we have this like reverse 
kind of thing. So again, just another thing to kind of do to this, which is really cool. Uh, just kind of feeding, feeding your creative brain there to try to uh, create some cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, time effector. Give it some love. Give it some time, some understanding, and uh, enjoy it and use it in your animations. All right, so there's a little introduction to the time effector and some creative uses for you. I hope it kind of jogged some nice creative ideas and hopefully gets you uh, excited to try it out in your own workflow. The time effector really needs some love shown to it. It's a really useful effector. I love it. Uh, if you have any questions about the time effector or Veronoi fracturing, uh, let me know in the comments section. And again, if you don't have Cinema 4D R18, be sure to check the description of this tutorial. I'll plug that link of that Throwsy plugin that also fractures things. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this tutorial, please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. And again, really appreciate you out there watching this tutorial. I'll see you all again real soon in the next tutorial. Bye, everybody.